Hello and good morning everyone. This is a lovely sunny Saturday morning here in West Sussex. All the alliteration that I can try and get in here at once. I'm live on YouTube. I've got a special guest in my office this morning. If he wakes up I'll show you in a bit but I've got my little dog in the office with me, little Lester. So um, maybe, yes I did mention your name and um, if he does decide to jump up at me I apologise but what did I want to talk about on this fine Saturday morning. Well, let me say that unless you have been sleeping underneath a rock the last week or so, Adobe has announced the Technical Communication Suite 2019. Now, full disclosure, Adobe are not paying me, sponsoring me to say or do or promote or do anything about their product. This is Michael Ingledew talking about what's new in the Adobe TechCom Suite Today I'm going to talk about FrameMaker specifically because that's the one that I've looked at already. But um, they are, they're not supporting this. They do support TDW in plenty of other ways. But I'm talking about this as a user of the TechCom suite. So we, as I've mentioned before on plenty of tutorials, that we do have the licenses of Adobe TechCom suite here within our little office and uh, we use it for multiple multitude of reasons and I've talked about why we talk about the uh, the use of the TechCom suite. So what I thought I would do is I would just talk about the TechCom suite but specifically around FrameMaker right now because like I said that's the stuff that I have looked at and um, just a massive shout out to Cybel and the team there. They helped me yesterday, I think it was yesterday or the day before, get the TechCom suite installed on my PC, which can be a little bit of a pain in the backside, my uh, PC. I went for a custom-built PC. I won't mention the company name. Will I be doing it again? No, is the answer to that question. So um, I will be going back to trusty Dell is what I'll be doing because I know that, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm actually looking at a gaming PC. So if anybody out there has, uh, not because I'm a massive gamer, but because of all of the augmented reality and virtual reality stuff out there. So if anybody out there in the tubes has any recommendation on a machine that can really knock it out of the park in terms of video editing and that kind of stuff, that would be super, super helpful to me, especially if you've done all the research and that already. So I don't need to worry about that. So where are we? We're gonna talk about the Adobe TechCom Suite for Rainmaker and I'm going to go through basically the features that they have on their website which I did put a little link up yesterday on I'll put it down below so you can go and have a read of the features yourself massive thank you to Adobe who invited me to their pre-partner press release of the announcement of TCS unfortunately I couldn't make it because I was training a client in Germany at the time uh, but Anyway, I have gone through some of the release notes. I've got the software installed. And what are they saying? So there's about, what, 4, 8, 12, 14, 15 things here that we can talk about. So I'm going to, I'm doing this off the top of my head. So I've not researched or, um, or planned this. So if I do pause and try to read something, I'll apologize. So now they are utilizing the 64-bit architecture of your machines, of which this is supposed to be one, but... Um, it still is a NAF machine, but they are now saying that they are, it's going to be up to 65% faster. Now, and that comes to rendering times and export times of the documents that you are producing. I want to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Now, interactive real-time progress bar. What a massive, massive change in FrameMaker. Adobe have in some of their software, they're really, really good. Uh, like I've said, I use TechCom Suite and I use Creative Cloud and they are really good in some parts of their software solutions at telling a user what's going on, certainly what's going on in the background. And uh, in some s software solutions, not so great. If anybody publishes a big document from InDesign and you're not used to InDesign, you know, just trying to figure out what's going on is is you know am i actually publishing it until you know where to look it is something that uh, can frustrate you but they have now put in real time progress bars to let you know what's going on in terms of book building and interactive pdf creation and that kind of stuff they are saying also that they have 
um, introduced the new image transparency support for documents that are going out to mobile, which is a huge thing and something here that we are looking at at TDW right now is how do we publish more content to mobile and there'll be more stuff coming out from that. So again, I will look at this. Now this one I was super stoked and super excited about is that anybody who uses Frame, and I didn't load it up this morning, but um, anybody who uses Frame knows that you can directly connect to a repository, an external repository, whether that's the Adobe um, content managers or whether that's the stuff that we use, which is Microsoft SharePoint. Now, we tried and tried and tried with the 2017 version of TCS to connect to SharePoint. We have an Office 365, Microsoft Office and Exchange 365 subscription. And with that, we get SharePoint. Unfortunately, FrameMaker would not connect to our 365 subscription. There must have been some kind of bug or something. Adobe admitted it, saying that it wasn't something that they supported at that time. Looks like they've now put it in. So I'm going to do some tutorials on that. I'm going to have that. I'm going to actually going to try and do that today. I'm going to try and connect to our SharePoint. We have SharePoint. And if I can get that working, tutorial coming your way. And I will show you how we manage to get it to work. They are saying there is now quicker access to the welcome screen. And we have a we have a document that uh, we loaded yesterday. And um, oh, come here, Lester, up you come, come on. Sorry, one of my neighbor's dogs is barking and I told you this could happen. So um, the quick act, let me tell you that FrameMaker loaded super, super quickly. I started it yesterday and it, it was almost instantaneous. And I thought, no, this can't be right. So I shut the machine down I loaded it up again and away we went. It was absolutely incredible. It was so I thought, well, let me load up uh, Captivate, let me load up RoboHelp, and they were just instantaneous. It was frighteningly, frighteningly quick. So when they're saying that they are using the 64 bit of the new PC's capability, they are absolutely using it. It really, really went super, super quick. And I'm going to be doing some bench tests on that. I've got some documents that I will load up and I've got some documents that uh, I will publish and we will publish those bench tests. So new um, Dudden dictionary, which I think is Dudden is how you say it. it could be Duden. I don't know, but it's a new or improved ability of working with the German language. And Lester knows a little bit of German, don't you? We tell you how to sit in German, you know how to do that. So um, the uh, Duden or Duden, I've never heard of it before, to be perfectly honest, is a trusted German dictionary for accurate spelling and hyphenation. And if anybody works with uh, German languages or any, you want to say something? You want to say something? Say something. So um, if you, uh, work with those those kind of German languages or anything along those lines. There's lots of special characters. There's lots of um, things that you need to consider. So the German language is also now deeply, deeply supported within Frame. HTML5 dialog boxes for those of you that are creating plugins and dialog boxes is also something that we are looking at here at TDW because we are looking at an app. What are you trying to do? Do you want to go down? Don't bark. We are looking at apps and we are looking at how we can um, go to a mobile device. And we are looking at something called Good Barber right now, which is going to let us publish, we hope, our content to mobile devices as well, which will be interesting. If you have ever worked with images in FrameMaker, it can be a little bit cumbersome. It can be a little bit tedious. It can be really, really confusing, which is why on TDIQ, we created multiple tutorials on that. And one click image resizing is now in the platform. Again, I haven't looked at that yet. I haven't looked at that in frame, but I will do because the, if they've improved that and they have made it more efficient for you to be able to work with images, that is something I absolutely am super stoked to hear. And uh, new WebP image support. If you don't know what WebP is yet, go and 
go and Google it. It's kind of the next generation of how Google is going to present high res, high quality images to users on the internet. And Frame is now going to support this off the shelf, which is super, super exciting. Now there's a whole load of PDF type improvements that are included within Frame. And um, they're saying that they're giving you more control over things like bleed and bleed markers and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, we produce the TDW magazine, but we produce it in InDesign because InDesign is very, very, you know, great for us to be able to just drag and drop. And, and we have complete control over the PDF exports in terms of how our printer expects to use them. But we will look at Frame and see if Frame can actually improve our processes in any way, especially if we can connect it to SharePoint and we can share that then, the published articles, with our printer direct without using things like mail to big file and, or yeah, it's called mail to big file, um, that we use. And they're saying that they've also included now the ability to manipulate the metadata that goes within to that PDF. So things that, and also password protection, so that that's also included within the TCS or the FrameMaker suite. For the developers out there, and I know that there are some of you out there that are developing applications around Frame, effortless EDD creation. Now, the last time I wrote an EDD, it was actually really quite cumbersome, complex, and uh, ugly to do. And uh, they're saying now that they've now generated this kind of HMI that you can work with it very, very easily, very, very quickly. And I assume that's going to work really well with the next part, which is Ditter Open Toolkit 3.0 support is now in there. I did check yesterday and I can say that the the S1000D support is still in there and uh, very, very rudimentary, just basic, you know, uh, style sheets and that for you to get going but they are in there. Uh, but the Ditter Open Toolkit 3.0 support is now in there. And, you know, this is something where FrameMaker is exceptionally strong, as is if you look at RoboHelp. And I'm going to talk about RoboHelp on a live session probably through the week because there's now two versions of RoboHelp. And uh, I noticed that yesterday. And you've got the XSL three uh, XSLT 3.0 support for you developers out there. So you can do all of your data mapping and all that kind of beautiful publishing and transformations that you want to do inside FrameMaker. So I just want to say that, you know, I'll pop this up. If you want to have a look at, but just make sure that I'm still on, go and have a look at the Adobe website. You can see that, uh, you know, again, they're not sponsoring this. They're not paying me to say this. They're not paying me or asking me to be really super polite around what they're doing or what they're saying. But do go and have a look at uh, the website and check out the press releases yourself and check out the features and make sure the features will work for you. What I will say is that I think it's, I can't remember the date, but I'll put the link down below when we publish this, that Adobe is running a webinar which we have actually uh, subscribe to or we're going to attend and they're going to talk about all the new features that are in the tech comm suite now obviously we're more interested in the features that are appropriate to our market to what's going on in the aerospace defense and space technical communications market so there's that's the area that we're going to drive down into and we're going to have a look at but i think most of what i've talked about here is actually going to be super, super beneficial for us in our market. What I will also say is that, you know, this, this I believe, has been a super release of the TechCom suite. It looks very, very comprehensive. It looks like they've really added some really thought and deep thought deeply thought out features which are you know obviously we're going to dig down into them and they've they've enhanced a whole load of stuff I, and you know i'm not going to go through all of those i'll put a link down below you can go and have a read of all of the features that are there in frame again they did not pay me to say anything this is ingledew saying his saturday morning thoughts around the tech 
Com Suite. I'd be interested to hear, are you using the Adobe Tech Com Suite? Do you plan to use it? Is it something that's interesting to you or are you into another eco structure like the PTC tools or the WebEx systems tools or anything along those lines? Uh, sorry if I've missed anybody that, that that's out there. But I thought what I wanted to do is say, look, you know, if you haven't heard this week, that's the big news. That's the big news is that the Techcom suite has hit the streets and there's a link on our website you can go and download i think it's a 30-day trial or it's a 15 14 day trial or something i don't know go and have a look at it and you get off the shelf ditta support and you get off the shelf rudimentary s1000d support if anybody has tremendous success connecting frame to their sharepoint instances please do give me a shout because i think that is super exciting and i know clients already that are checking out that capability. So that sounds pretty good. So I apologize for my little dog jumping up on me there. Lester, where are you? Never, yeah, never. Oh, he's gone to sleep, sorry guys. I'll bring him in on another future tutorial. He's fast asleep. We've been up and had a nice early morning walk this morning. So um, thumbs up if you like this, subscribe, make sure you follow all of our channels where we are actually gonna be starting. Somebody has asked us to create a Snapchat I'm not a Snapchat knower. I don't know how it works, but uh, I've got a 15 year old daughter who can show me all of this stuff. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, obviously on YouTube, which is where we are right now. And if you haven't started following yet our S1000D A to Z, check out S1000DWorld.com. And we now have, or we're working through the alphabet on our A to Z or A to Z of S1000D, which we have already had a tremendous amount of feedback on. So thank you. And we've only done the A's. I'm recording the B's today, as it happens. And I'm just making sure that uh, there's a few of you online. So hello, good morning. And it's Saturday, guys. You should be out enjoying the sunshine. That's certainly what it is here today. Um, but hopefully you get a little bit of use out of this video. I hope you like the new intro and the new outro. And um, check out TCS guys and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share this because I'm gonna be doing more live stuff as we go forward. Cheers guys, I'm gonna go and try and enjoy a little bit of my Saturday. <laughs>